Yes, thank you uh, for your kind introduction. Uh, I am honored uh, to have the opportunity to give my talk. Uh, my title is Utilization of Microbial Functions for Food Supply and Global Environmental Protection. Okay. <coughs> okay, so soil is important. The, I would like to uh, yeah, uh, say the soil, the significance of soil. The soil is a precious resource for mankind and uh, exists only on, on the earth. The soil is only 18 centimeter thickness uh, on average and uh, present a skin of earth. The soil is a delicate and a finite resource and support our food production. Let's back to, uh, let's back to as a past, the soil loss. Okay, soil loss led to the collapse of the Greek and the Roman civilization. Okay, uh, the soil loss has also the power to ruin our modern civilization too. On the other hand, industrial nitrogen fixation uh, was invented Harvard and Bosch in the early 20th century. Mass production of chemical nitrogen fertilizer support explosive population increase by green revolution. However, large amount of nitrogen fertilizer has been applied to the soil, uh, which has uh, detrimental effects uh, on the environment. Nowadays, uh, the amount of industrial nitrogen fixation based on the Harvard Bosch process is compatible to biological nitrogen fixation. Uh, Three percent, three percent of the world fossil fuel is consumed by industrial nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen fertilizers applied into the agricultural land cause environmental pollution, uh, such as leaching as a nitrate to ground groundwater and the environment uh, enhancement of a nitrous oxide gas emission from soil. Nitrous oxide, N2O, is an important greenhouse gas. The largest source of uh, N2O are from agriculture, which represents more than 72% of the uh, total andro uh, anthropogenic N2O emissions. In plenary session two yesterday, uh, Dr. Kitano also mentioned that the nitrogen use exceeds the capacity of the earth. As I mentioned, uh, the 20th century green revolution using chemical fertilizer achieved increased crop production, but caused several environmental issues such as eutrophication and uh, greenhouse gas emission, legacy P accumulation in soil. In the natural soil, huge amount of microorganisms, uh, microorganisms uh, exist and especially in the rhizosphere where interface between the plant and the soil uh, that shows uh, uh, strong plant micro interactions. A recent study have shown the rhizosphere micro uh, play an important role in nitrogen, phosphorus, carbon cycles in soil and able to confer stress tolerance uh, and the growth promotion in plant. This is eventually leading to the uh, plant robustness against future environmental changes. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> To overcome this serious issue, I would like to propose a moonshot targets, the complete uh, regulation of soil microbial environments toward zero chemical fertilizer and green gas gas reduction. This goal includes the increase uh, of crop production uh, without chemical fertilizer. The second uh, one is a reduction of the greenhouse gas derived from agriculture. The third one is a restoration of a degraded soil for food production. Okay. Uh, plants need nitrogen and phosphorus for their growth 
Availability of these nutrients constrains the productivity of agroecosystem. To overcome this constraint, plants acquire these nutrients through the symbiotic interactions with soil microbes. A legume can acquire atmospheric nitrogen via endosymbiotic, endosymbiosis with a nitrogen fixing rhizobia. The majority of ground plants accommodate a vascular mycorrhiza fungi, uh, which efficiently uptake phosphorus from soil. You can see the great impact on the growth uh, by the inoculation of the rhizobium and uh, a vascular mycorrhiza mycorrhiza. Symbiotic nutrient absorption has attracted attention as a mean uh, to replace chemical fertilizer in sustainable agriculture. Okay, so what are the research bottlenecks in the academic fields? Okay, uh, due to the complexity of microbial process in the agroecosystem, uh, it is difficult to regulate nitrogen, phosphorus, carbon cycle, uh, greenhouse gas mitigation and interactions. And the second one is the more, more than 90, 90%, uh, 99% microbes in the agricultural fields have not yet been cultivated due to the limitation of conventional culture techniques. The sadly, a soil microbe uh, lives in the complex soil structure like this, uh, where nutrient uh, gas exchange are, uh, and communication are drastically fluctuated along with the space and time. Sorry. Okay, so I think that the new technology and idea are, are developing to overcome these bottlenecks. Okay. Uh, <coughs> Next, uh, I will touch on five successful results in Japan. Okay, nodule decomposition in the main source of uh, N2O in the soybean rhizosphere, where soil microbes uh, mediated nitrogen transformation uh, from nitrification and denitrification, and uh, this N2O gas was released to the atmosphere. However, the, some rhizobium reduced uh, N2O uh, to N2 and uh, reduced N2O emission from the field. The, this is a field experiment that we use the uh, 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 rhizobium uh, carrying the, uh, the in, uh, strong NOS uh, N2O activity. The inoculation, inoculation of these bacteria reduced the N2O emission in the field level. Uh, this is a novel option to mitigate uh, biologically N2 emission in the field level. Uh, second, uh, is, uh, second uh, research result is the uh, mycorrhiza. A vascular mycorrhiza fungi are obligate symbi symbionts that depend on the living host plants to complete their life cycle. This feature leads to unculturability of this beneficial uh, fungi. Despite many years of trial for artificial in fungi cultivation, there has been no uh, success so far. The extensive genomics and uh, chemical studies uh, by Kameoka et al. revealed that uh, lipid or palmitoic acids, uh, this lipid uh, is required to finish the life cycle of M fungi. Okay. Yes, uh, this research was done by the GST Axel projects. This is the first successful uh, cultivation of fungi, uh, open the way to mass production of fungi as a microbial uh, phosphorus fertilizers. The next research is the uh, is a, how can I say theoretical ecology, maximizing the microbial function in agrochemical are essential for the future of global agriculture. However, managing species-rich community, uh, plant microbe, 
uh, plant-associated microbes remains a major challenge. Uh, the Tojo et al. proposed uh, interdisciplinary research strategy to optimize microbiome function in agroecosystem. Intergenetic uh, uh, integration of network science and theoretical ecology of microbial community revealed uh, core microbes. Core microbes uh, <coughs> yeah, reveal the core microbes that are located at the center of the network. Uh, it looks like a boss uh, of a microbial community. When uh, a boss of the beneficial microbes, uh, sorry, sorry, when a boss of beneficial microbial community is inoculated to plant, the D boss recruits the uh, resident beneficial microbes like this. If the boss of the detrimental microbes community, yeah, uh, the boss recruits a detrimental resident microbes. Okay, this type of work will provide a novel strategy to design the core microbes, which will increase the resource efficiency, and stress resistance agroecosystems. Okay. Uh, to understand the uh, and regulate soil microbial, uh, microbial process and function, it is a crucial, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> we, uh, uh, we also need to know the molecular basis of microbial community behavior in the cell level, other than the omics and the informatics analysis. A research of uh, projects of ERATO microbial control projects developed a unique imaging techniques of microbial community. The techniques including in vivo imaging Raman imaging autofluorescence that was used for the uh, uh, talk in this morning, and uh, microfluidics. And, uh, by using these techniques, the, we can know the many, many things, uh, okay, <coughs> for uh, uh, which reveal the uh, spatial temporal, temporal, the uh, control of plant immunity, and a non homologous uh, okay, distribution of metabolite in the single fungal cells and uh, physiological heterogeneity uh, with a, a microbial population. Moreover, moreover a mechanism for bacterial membrane vesicle they're like this uh, attracts a lot of interest of microbiologists as a tool to control microbial community. We may utilize this membrane vesicle uh, to regulate plant associated microbes in the field level. Okay, uh, to understand and regulate soil microbial process and function, it is crucial to understand microbial, uh, understand microbial habitat and uh, physical chemical environments uh, that they live in. Uh, thanks to the rapid uh, advance in X ray based technology, we can now quantify the microbial habitats in a realistic way. Uh, just like this, uh, this building we are in, soil microbes are living in three-dimensional structures called soil aggregate, like this. Uh, inside soil aggregate, there are, uh, there are a lot of the connected pore and walls uh, that was made uh, mineral uh, minerals and organic matter, which is food for the soil microbes. Using the synchrotron X-ray uh, with computed uh, top, tomo tomography techniques, in collaboration with a French, a France scientist of India or Germ uh, G Germany scientist, we are developing a new approach to quantify the poor minerals, organic matter, as a spatial scale of individual bacterial cells, roughly one micrometer. Uh, this uh, it will be a powerful approach to better understand the soil microbial community dynamics. Okay. I'd like to point out the biggest bottleneck of researcher identity. Okay. Uh, <coughs> related to the, our moon uh, shot target. Uh, the researcher of soil science 
uh, ecology, microbiology, uh, informatics, and plant science are independent, as if they were used a different language. Uh, there is a rare interdisciplinary collaboration among these fields so far. Okay, when microbiologists ask a, st uh, ask, uh, ask a question, is there standard soil for microbiology like other traits? Soil scientists answer, no, because soil are diverse and variable with space and time. Uh, to open a breakthrough, I would like to propose a novel interdisciplinary collaboration here. Okay. Because uh, below ground ecosystem uh, is complex of soil, plant, and microbes, we need to go beyond academic field barrier and gaps. This attempt uh, will, uh, will uh, could provide a new insights and technological solutions. Uh, solutions. In addition, uh, it may be read uh, uh, science-driven social movement like this. Uh, that was a talk uh, discussed yesterday, session one. Okay. I would like to introduce the three research example or image. Okay. Uh, microbes, microbial, uh, micro, microbial, micro communication and nutrient uh, and the greenhouse gas dynamics of plant microbe interaction are strongly controlled by soil structure, which consists of mineral particles, organic matter, and microbes. To understand this interaction, uh, okay, uh, yeah, this effort could provide a promising uh, okay, uh, so yes, uh, there, there are many. Uh, so I would like to design the soil by uh, using the knowledge and the material and uh, uh, innovation, uh, technological innovation. And uh, uh, it is very important uh, to design the soil. They, because uh, uh, during very various stages, Okay. The effort could provide a promising platform that they, uh, their experiments of single cell technology, genomics, and new microbiology network, and uh, material recycling. Uh, finally, we want to construct a robust soil system, uh, soil system including microbial community, uh, and soil, and plants. Uh, this is uh, just an image of the construction of the design of soil. The, uh, these materials mixed and yeah, and uh, how can I say, microbes inoculated and we uh, constructed a soil particle and in the test hypothesis and the feedback again. And uh, during these efforts, uh, I believe that the uh, more, uh, how can I say, concrete and uh, good platform for uh, many scientists in various areas, okay. Uh, the second example is the, okay, uh, <coughs> a microbial nitrogen fertilizer in the upland field. As I mentioned, uh, the rhizobia fix in two uh, symbiotically in regular nodules as bi biological nitrogen fertilizer. Uh, nitrogen fixation also occur in the root of uh, non leguminous plants uh, as well. However, plant microbe interaction have been studied as a one-to-one -one relationship. That is one microbes and one plant. The innovative analysis uh, of microbial community related to the nitrogen fixation and nitrogen cycle are possible uh, by several uh, techniques. Uh, based on uh, this uh, visualization uh, community analysis, we'll be able to design a new plant microbe interactions to maximize microbial nitrogen fixation and the plant and the requirement without the nitrogen uh, fertilizers. The third uh, example is uh, related to the paddy rice field. The paddy rice field uh, has been sustainable for more than 1,000 years in terms of nutrient supply and rice production. 
the soil methanogen uh, produce a methane gas uh, as a greenhouse gas and uh, under anoxic conditions. Uh, recently, methane oxidizing bacteria in the paddy rice, uh, paddy rice roots, and uh, rhizosphere soil were found to reduce methane emission and fix and to gas as well. In addition, a recent omic study suggested that iron redox mediated N2 fixation uh, may be occur, and uh, anaerobic N2 reducing bacteria was present in the paddy field. But this is just an example. So, complete understanding of uh, microbial nitrogen and carbon uh, process in uh, paddy, rice paddy fields by new approach could open a novel strategy to mitigate greenhouse gas and no fertilizer management. Okay, so uh, interface between the information and biology gave us a strong version in, in the future. In 1990s, that is 30 years ago, we sequenced one kilobase, uh, 1,000 character of DNA in one day using one machine. Uh, today, uh, we can sequence uh, one terabase, uh, 12 power of the 10 of DNA, uh, one day uh, using one machine. Uh, given, the huge, uh, given the huge need of DNA sequence in every area related to the life science, in 2005, uh, 30 years later, uh, it is expected that we will sequence uh, one zeta base or 20 power of 10 characters of DNA. Uh, this vast development of DNA sequence technology uh, is guaranteed by the medical diagnostic research as uh, Son Sang uh, talked yesterday. But today, uh, uh, we edit DNA, and it is not difficult to imagine that we will be able to program DNA in 2050. We must to be ready to take full advantage of reading, editing, writing technology of DNA information to understand, control, design the microbial ecosystem to revolutionize uh, agriculture. Okay, uh, designing soil, uh, plant, micro system via interdisciplinary research will be supported by various te uh, technological innovation uh, including the microbial genomics. Uh, this effort will open a window to attain the uh, moonshot targets to complete the regulate of soil microbial environments toward zero chemical fertilizer and greenhouse gas reduction. I would like to show the future image that achieved by our moonshot research in 2050 because we can know to construct microbial community in a soil plant ecosystem toward restoration of the degraded soil, as well as the no chemical fertilizers. Okay, uh, fertilizer agriculture and the greenhouse gas uh, reduction on the earth. Therefore, uh, this technology will uh, be appreciable for terraforming, such as mass beyond the moon, uh, to <laughs> expand our uh, life other than the Earth. Earth. Okay. Okay. This is a summary. Uh, consider the, the three research uh, team uh, as a center of the stride. If even one of the these is lacking, uh, our goal will be difficult to achieve. So I will strongly uh, pursue these three research challenges in concert with the aim of uh, creating a food production system uh, capable both of expanding our food supply and conserve our global environment. Thank you for your attention. I'm Maurit Bahezadeh, I work at the OECD, um, and I'm here today to talk to you about the, uh, the different approach we're taking now to address food loss and waste. 
Uh, the title is From a Supply Chain to a Food Systems Approach to Food Loss and Waste. And what I will do here today is to talk to you about the OECD method. Some of you may already know it. Uh, we work on evidence and policies, and then from there, uh, I would like to say what uh, we know about uh, food loss and waste, the policy rationale for reducing food loss and waste, and then the data issues, and then what I think is a very promising approach, which is the food systems approach. Uh, on the OECD, for those who don't know us, we're uh, an inter-country uh, inter um, organization. We're government-led. We have 36 members, and we're a consensus organization. What we do and what we have been doing for the past 60 years almost is to advise governments on the policies they make. Uh, we Initially, we were installed to... Um, give advice to governments on how to spend Marshall funds after uh, post-war reconstruction. We don't dispense money. All our uh, capacities, our intellectual capacities, the staff, we don't, we, all the monies are spent on the staff and we organize a bit like government. We have directorates which would match uh, the government uh, Constitution. So I work in trade and agriculture, mostly on agriculture, and my counterparts in Japan are the Ministry of Agriculture generally, but for some projects we extend beyond. Um, and when I say we're a consensus organization, I mean that when we take a decision, all countries must be on board. So uh, sometimes we don't do anything dramatic, but in the, uh, and what we recommend is not sometimes not followed by government, but still we, we keep on recommending. Uh, so the work on, uh, our work on food loss and waste was uh, mandated by ministers, uh, ministers of OECD member countries in 2010. Uh, this followed uh, the, the dramatic um, announcement by FAO that 30% of food, food was either lost or wasted uh, the number we're not sure about, and I'll tell you more about that, but it had the, the, the value of creating an impact. So in 2010, when uh, OECD ministers of agriculture got together, they decided that we should examine what's going on. In 2016, when they met again, they said again that food loss and waste is an important issue. Uh, and it was incorporated in another uh, parts of our work in the OECD green strategy, green growth strategy, that's more led by our environmental colleagues. Um, and what we have done since is uh, we've uh, used four angles to explore what's going on. Um, in the first, um, the, wh one set of the work was to uh, stock take of what is available, what data is available. Uh, we captured all food waste data and we set up a database with, we didn't produce any data ourselves, we just collected what was readily available. Uh, we also did some scenario analysis um, using the AgLink model on the world, uh, on the impacts on world markets of um, a food waste reduction. Actually, uh, the colleague who did that work at the time for us is uh, part of the Japanese uh, 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 government, and uh, he's sitting here, it's Koki Okawa. So I would like to recognize this work. So the, the, work, um, the work done uh, analyzed four scenarios, uh, whether the, um, uh, food, what would be the impact of reducing across the board, uh, what would be the impact on only grains at consumer level, and mostly what the work showed was that um, modeling and com uh, modeling work is, has limited results, so we, we would need to have uh, more information on the, the components and the, 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 the commodities that would be involved. And um, the economy-wide impacts are uncertain. So that was one thing that the work established. We also did a policy stock take. Uh, 
And we did some case studies. Also, Koki did the work on Japan and the UK. And what we, what we, what the policy stock take showed that there's a shift from waste management to resource and economic efficiency uh, efforts for governments. A mix of instruments are in place. Uh, they can be economic, they can be um, uh, regulatory, they can be educational. And depending on the governments, some of these are already in place or were already in place in 2010. And then we did a, a, a workshop, on, a sectoral workshop, to see what is going on at retail and processing levels. Um, from there, we could build this um, chart. So from left to right, uh, it's a supply chain approach. So production is on farm. And then you have handling in storage, processing in packaging, distribution in markets, and consumption. Uh, what we know is that um, we know little about primary production, what is lost or wasted on farm. I indiffer indifferently use lost and wasted while uh, some methodological issues uh, may uh, apply to the difference between loss and waste. I think that the, the connotation of whether one is voluntary and one is not is very uh, on sh shaky ground, so uh, I wouldn't go into that detail. Um, Capturing the, what is lost or wasted on farm is very difficult because it's, uh, first you don't know, uh, farms are scattered and they don't necessarily spend the time to make an inventory of things that they don't uh, harvest. Uh, but we know for sure that this is happening depending on your area of work, on whether it's uh, perishable products produce or not, very much whether dependent seasonal like green greens are very uh, very likely or susceptible to weather change, to market change. If you, if you have a bumper harvest, you, you won't do it all because you know the market, it would depress market prices. So capturing and evaluating food loss and waste on farm is a very hard uh, job. Uh, and then the rest of the sectors and the, the, the where as you advance in the supply chain, it can be complex because co uh, Industry doesn't report, depending on the obligations they have. And, but exa example of efforts and case studies that have been made show that it's not, that it's not because they don't report that it doesn't exist. And uh, it's the understanding the scale is a difficult um, job. On, uh, what we know more about is on, uh, on retail, um, cosmetic standards can have an impact. Um, and the idea of the endeavor for, for, for the industry to, is to increase the efficiency and increase the finished product output with the same amount of raw material. Um, the other uh, avenues that uh, industry is exploring is to valorize uh, the, what, what would not be consumed as food. Uh, with the examples we heard today and yesterday about smart agriculture may be very valuable to reduce food loss and waste on farm. However, uh, you, may, you must also consider that robotics and packaging standards require standard looking and standard weighting and standard products and agriculture doesn't produce standard products generally. So it, this, may, they might, this might cause frictions also as, uh, at places where um, you wouldn't expect them. So I suppose you know the food use hierarchy. So uh, from top to bottom, top is the preferred use and then the bottom is the least preferred. So food should be used as food and then if you can't um, use it as food, you should try to uh, reduce your, uh, reduce and prevent the, the, the waste at source. Then recovery. Recovery means that what one, one uh, food is not eaten at its at its initial uh, intention place. Food banks can take over, or other uh, other food consumption can play in. Uh, then animal feed. This is common, I think, in Japan. In other places, it's more uh, discussed. I think the EU is changing their law uh, to allow. Uh, the use of some wasted foods, uh, not all. 
they, they come from, uh, uh, they have had difficult experiences. And then the industrial uses, and then when there's no other choice, then obviously disposal. And I think this was mentioned in the earlier speech that, uh, land, I mean, using, disposing of food uh, is, is a difficult one. And I might say more about this uh, now. Uh, the policy ra rationale for reducing food waste. Uh, the focus has evolved through time from um, a waste flow management. Uh, initially, the, the, when um, we, we were faced with food was at, the, as, at its point of entry in the food, uh, in the waste management uh, streams. Uh, so uh, the problem with food waste is that it's wet. So you can't burn it, you can't dispose it, and, and uh, often uh, nowadays um, landfills are forbidden and, use, uh, and uh, using, a dispensing of food waste on landfills is often uh, forbidden. So combustion is hard and um, you need to find a, find a solution for it. And then, from food waste management, it moved to uh, food security and food safety um, to optimize nutrition and uh, availability and diversity and quantity. We don't think that um, this is a real, so, I mean, this is a real valuable and valid reason to reduce food loss and waste because if you save your food in some place, it doesn't mean that it's available in, other, in another place. And generally, uh, food security is a matter of uh, access to food and affordability. So it's, it probably is not uh, the direct solution. Then sustainability has come into uh, the, the landscape more recently. And uh, the, the optimization of resource use is definitely a good reason to try and reduce food loss and waste. Besides the... Uh, the ethical issue that we all have in mind that you shouldn't waste food, but that doesn't work in economic terms generally. So from there, the, there have been commitments. Uh, the SDG 12.3 is by, uh, um, aims that, that by uh, 2030, you would have halved per capita global food waste in the retail and consumer levels and reduce food losses along production and supply chain, including post-harvest losses. Um, the, the, the OECD and G20 agriculture ministers also have also committed to that, and um, the G20 agriculture ministers' declaration have, have, have endeavored to uh, take a leading role in the reduction of food loss and waste. In um, 2016, the uh, OECD ministers saw reducing food loss and waste to contribute to increased food chain efficiency, improved food security, and reduction in pressure on the environment. These are all elements that have, we have touched upon. Uh, so for this, when you say you want to have, then you need to have a number. Uh, you need to have uh, uh, data. You need to have uh, common data collection methodologies, you need to have definitions of food loss and waste, and uh, for this then to be able to design policy responses. And um, we haven't seen from these, we haven't seen any, any signs of real success or uh, ways that you would be, the, the, the Golden bullet or the silver bullet has not been created to address food, food loss and waste. And um, we, we also try, um, the, the zero waste may not be the optimal. That's one thing I think we should bear in mind. So what is measured gets managed. Uh, the waste flow management is, uh, is what measures waste when it's uh, at the point of entry of the treatment cycle. The problem is that uh, generally food waste is not isolated, so it's difficult to uh, have a real number of what is, uh, enters the f waste treatment cycle. Furthermore, uh, in, for example, if, uh, for when you consider uh, on-farm food waste or loss, 
generally, you, it doesn't ever, uh, even enter uh, a treatment cycle. It stays on farm, and you don't even see it. Sometimes in rural areas, you have a, even if you're not a farmer, you have a compost sack at the end of the garden, and then it doesn't uh, appear. Uh, wh when it's about food safety and availability, uh, it's, measured, it's measured when the food leaves the food chain. So there maybe there, there could be a way to measure. And then when you talk about sustainability, it's generally you apply a coefficient to what you think is wasted and you know how much water goes into bread, for example, and then you multiply and you, you come up with a theoretical number. Data gaps and comparability issues, these are like the, the big problems. Uh, there's no standard definition of loss or waste. Uh, in some methodologies, uh, either loss or waste depends on when it happens on the food supply chain. Uh, in the common language, it's a matter of involuntary. So loss, it's something it was, that was involuntary, and then waste is something that you were in a way responsible of, and we don't adhere to that at all. Um, there's sometimes uh, the distinction between edible and inedible, so the banana peel is not waste because it was inedible in some methodologies. In others, uh, the more uh, environmentalists would say, okay, we've spent resources and we've produced the banana peel just as much as the flesh, so it's waste. Um, and then avoidable and unavoidable, but these are all um, issues that statisticians must tackle and consider when they try to put a number on the notion. Uh, then the, the measurement issues, where, whether it's weight, whether it's value, whether it's calories, then the right indicators, you have a percent, you have, uh, these are all important because at the end of the day you want to aggregate the number and have one single across the board, across commodities number, and that's, this is why I mention all this for you. Um, but th there have been encouraging developments. There have been methodologies proposed for, for example, for proce processing to capture, to try to capture, for also uh, what we call horeca, ho uh, ho hotel restaurants and catering. Uh, these are important places of um, food not being eaten. So, uh, and it, these, this area is one of growing importance too as middle classes, um, the, class, the size of middle class populations increase and out of home, home eating becomes more of a habit. Uh, also the fact that uh, excess food is a way of abundance and uh, hospitality. So in a restaurant, if you have a small portion, then you might feel someone has been cheating you. Uh, and, but then it's over what you can eat. Um, we, they, the, the coverage at household level generally is better than the other stages of the consumption at, in the OECD, I should say. Uh, but then we need to improve the coverage in the primary sector, in manufacturing and food related sectors. Uh, someone yesterday said, uh, I think it was Maurice, um, it, it is key to have a clear definition and to be able to measure progress. I think definitely food loss and waste is not yet in that stage. The definition is not clear and it's, we don't have measuring instruments uh, that are uh, accurate enough, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean we shouldn't do anything about it. Uh, there, there, there's hope. So the global food system is facing a, a, a triple challenge. This is not just about food loss and waste. It's someone mentioned livestock producing and all that. So the, 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 the triple challenge is that you want to uh, food and nutrition security. To, you want to feed uh, a world population that's expected to grow. That's what's mentioned today. Uh, resource use and sustainability. I start with the third one because I think the second one has not been mentioned yet. Uh, so resource use and, and sustainability, there's land use is limited, land is limited, you, you, we would like to use less water, we would uh, want to adapt to climate change and to contribute to lower, uh, lower global, uh, greenhouse gas emissions. But then livelihoods and rural uh, development have not been mentioned in this conference 
up to now, I think. And this is a key area uh, for us. Uh, I, I work on policies, on agriculture policies, and every time I talk to a government official and I say, okay, you, you're giving way too much subsidies, they say, oh, but wait, we have a rural population and they can't uh, cope otherwise. So if, if a moonshot on the future of agriculture doesn't consider the farmer and the rural areas, then there's an issue. You, mu you must address this. Um, But then, I mean, as you, as you have shown today, you don't need uh, the farmer to be farming. You can have robots doing the work, but then you still want people in the rural, rural areas. You don't want rural areas just uh, directed from cities uh, with uh, robots sitting there. So this is of my... Um, uh, the food systems approach to tackle synergies and trade-offs. So what we think is the reason why uh, we think there haven't been so much progress up to now in dealing with the food loss and waste is that we have had this linear approach where uh, we try to tackle uh, and reduce at each level of the food supply chain. So when you talk to processing, they say, oh, but it's not us, it's, we don't, we don't. It's not economically efficient, so we wouldn't waste, would we? And then retail passes on, ba passes either back to processing if there's any waste happening or pass passes forward to the consumer. So no one really feels uh, in charge or responsible, and then we, look, we all look at the consumer and say, oh, you, you do waste too much, way too much uh, waste, and all is happening at your level which is not true. Uh, so we think that the reason why we have a, nothing has happened yet is that we haven't understood yet the trade-offs between reducing the, the need for investments in prevention, for example, the cost of prevention, and the cost of current food loss and waste. So uh, there's a cost there, and I think this is what we want to understand better. Uh, we, what we, by doing so, we would understand the obstacles to the reduction, and we would also, uh, rather than see the simple sequence. Uh, for example, uh, when we talk about cosmetic standards and the fact that uh, because of cosmetic standards, a lot of, uh, possibly, uh, not a lot, but some food is wasted on farm because it doesn't meet the, the standards of retail. Uh, is there a way to, to address that? Is it because uh, things must be packaged that they must be harmonious and round-shaped or uh, other? Uh, is it because th there's a contract because between the farmer and the retail that he has to p deliver 2,000, 2000 kilos of something, that the farmer is encouraged to produce 2,500 just in case things go wrong and then there's a surplus of 500? These, these are issues that we think we must understand before we can really develop the right policies to address the issues. Um, and we think that by understanding what is going on, we will be able to find the right incentives to address them. And then to see also what is a reasonable level of food loss and waste and what is beyond. But for the moment, we know nothing about all these. And these are the trade-offs we think we must understand. Um, there, we have several publications you may want to uh, consider, but the, there's, the, the links are in the, in the paper, in the PowerPoint, and you, you can probably get them later. And then these are my contacts if you want to uh, contact me. Thank you. So uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So I'll chair the, this uh, afternoon session. My name is Akira Sebe. I'm coming from so FFTC uh, from the Taipei, Taiwan. So today only, so we have uh, 20 minutes. So first of all, so I'd like to gr uh, greatly appreciate the two speakers, uh, Professor Minami Sawa and uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Mol Molbarito. So your talk is very so impressive and uh, so implicative. And uh, so also I'm, 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 the, the before the, our two speakers, uh, so European Commission people, so talk a little bit. Uh, I mean, uh, your, your horizon Europe is very uh, interesting because uh, you're focusing on so, so the health and the food because I'm an uh, originally soy scientist. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, and, uh, okay, so I'd like to start the uh, afternoon session. 
And uh, we have uh, two, two mission goals, right, as you remember. The one is uh, fully utilizing biological functions. This is uh, related to bioeconomy or climate economy. And uh, mission three, uh, mission th the last one, but it's not, uh, I think, I, I suppose it's not the least. Uh, this is uh, eliminate food loss and uh, waste and uh, promote uh, rational health and environment conscious food consumption. This, this uh, the mission goal is related to circular economy and the consumer economy, I think. So first of all, so uh, I have the only the 20, 20 minutes, so the first 10 minutes we are focusing on to the two speakers' question time. And uh, if you have questions, uh, please raise your hand and state your name and appreciation. And uh, like, uh, so uh, my chair, uh, uh, morning chair, uh, uh, Professor Noguchi. So uh, would you guess only one minute? Uh, after one minute, I, I stop you. <laughs> okay, so, so do you have any question and comment on Professor Minamisawa or uh, Malabarit? Do you have any question and comment to, to them? Oh, over there, over there. Oh, Professor Seno Sensei. Uh, I'm a Kiji Seno uh, from the University of Tokyo. Uh, I have a comment on uh, Minamisawa Sensei's talk. Uh, I have two comments. One is about the rice paddy soil, and the other is the soil aggregate structure. Uh, we, a agronomist, say rice is harvested from soil fertility. Uh, in Japanese, uh, ine wa chiryoku de toru, tsuchi no chikara. Ne? Uh, this means that the paddy uh, soil has a mechanism to keep sustainable soil fertility. Uh, in fact, amount of nitrogen fertilizer applied to uh, paddy soil is generally much less than uh, compared with upland cropping, that, uh, just like wheat and corn and so on. However, uh, the mechanism of the sustainable nitrogen fertility in rice paddy soil is still largely unknown. So I believe uh, recent progress in soil plant microbe study can clarify the mechanism completely, then will lead to zero nitrogen fertilizer rice production. The second comment is about soil aggregate, that is soil microstructure composed of mineral particles, organic particles, microorganism, air and water space. That is a key factor controlling soil diverse function, such as nitrogen cycle, uh, nutrient supply to plant, greenhouse gas generation, and carbon accumulation in soil. So the complete understanding of soil aggregate is essential to optimize soil condition and achieve zero fertilizer, zero uh, greenhouse gas emission. So I agree with uh, Minamisa Sensei's address that the collaborative studies on soil aggregate by various fields of scientists is very necessary and as one of the uh, moonshot missions. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Seno. Yes, comment. Uh, yes, uh, it's a comment, sir. One more. Thank you, Tok. Um, my name is uh, Naoto Shimizu. Uh, I come from Hokkaido University. So, uh, in order to prevent global warming uh, and or uh, zero food loss and waste in Japan, I consider it is important to resolve the supply demand imbalance on the food industry that is mainly caused by annual fluctuations in productivity and reduce uh, food losses and waste and enable to reuse surplus food on the consumer stage involve each citizen as food losses waste always occur to a certain extent daily. I think the situation is uh, similar in Europe and the US how it is, how about it, your countries? So, thank you. So, uh, 
Ms. Morales, please. Is it? Yes, now. Uh, so uh, the fact that agriculture production is variable every year has been going on for centuries, I don't think is anything new. And uh, one aspect that um, you, men you mentioned, you, you're asking what's going on in our countries. So uh, our countries are Japan, US, EU. So we have a, a, a more global view. What happens generally is that when uh, we, we would like countries to rely more on trade for uh, their uh, access to food, and it's not all, uh, all has, doesn't have to be produced in a single place for the, the local consumers. That's one answer to uh, food production and supply and demand imbalance. Uh, the, the, what we have observed is that years of plenty result in lower prices, result in next years of less. So agriculture generally can adapt. There's a role for government also uh, to uh, not encourage production that wouldn't be necessary. Uh, what, we, what we try at the OECD, what we have been advocating is to uh, divert uh, policies and payments and subsidies from support to production to support to public goods. Therefore, we think that governments have a role to play in other places than agriculture production per se. So in the case of Japan, you have, you have signed a recent, and not just the last years, but you have signed trade agreements that allow you to import goods and to export yours. So uh, rely on those when the supply is below demand. And when supply excesses demand, then you might want to uh, export. But I don't think it's the case in Japan mostly. OK. So, any other question and comment or the, over there? The rear seat, yes. You. Uh, I'm Lee from the Tokyo University of Agriculture and Technology. And uh, there is a very big gap between the uh, basic study and the applied study uh, using the microbe in the soil. Uh, especially uh, the in the field study, uh, the typical case is okay. However, the uh, the, uh, the most of case is not effective. So, how to solve the, this problem uh, with uh, this project? And uh, uh, I think uh, this is a, a more than ten year, uh, less than ten years, is uh, too short to solve this project. Thank you so much. So, how about Minamisa Sensei? <coughs> Yeah, I know, yeah. Uh, there is a gap between the field experiments and the uh, uh, normal, the pure uh, syst uh, inoculation experiments in the pure microbes. So there are many, many uh, approach. Uh, there are several approach to resolve this question uh, so far. The, uh, yeah, uh, however, so before that, the, I would like to emphasize the, I would like to make a how can I say platform, platform for the soil microbiology? Okay, so and uh, so if we construct this platform, so many scientists uh, use this system and uh, discuss together. Yeah, and uh, I know that the, there are many many variation in the field field scale, uh, and there are many type of soil. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah. However, the, I, I'm a soil microbiologist, and uh, it, uh, have, uh, I have been ignore the soil structure and uh, soil. How can I say uh, where where the microbes live in? Uh, this is a very very important question. The first of all, uh, we want to make a, such a platform and uh, answer the question. The recent many uh, Japanese citizen, uh, yeah, like uh, how can they farming and uh, uh, gardening, and uh, such a citizen ask me where is uh, soil microbes, <laughs> but we cannot answer at all. The, so this is very very important. Uh, they're very primitive, but the soil scientists don't uh, uh, answer answer their question, and uh, uh, yeah. So. 
to tell the truth, the, my idea, my presentation was constructed by the, uh, uh, how can I say, some very young scientists uh, working in various area. The, we have uh, some several commit, uh, uh, severe discussion about uh, the, uh, our targets. And uh, based on uh, this severe discussion, the, we, uh, we want to uh, first framework of this uh, soil, uh, design soil, and uh, by using design soil and to reduce the fertilizer and uh, greenhouse gas emission. And uh, anyhow, uh, however, uh, to, uh, we uh, should, uh, how can I say, uh, exp uh, in a field experiment, there are very, very descriptive data. D data. There are, fat is a cause, fat is a result. I cannot uh, discriminate. Yes, so the, I emphasize that f first of all, mm -hmm. in science level, we need uh, to the how fat is a soil, fat is a soil microbes uh, functions. Uh, this is important, I think. Okay, thank you so much. So we are moving on the so second part of the discussion. So can you show the our moonshot uh, target two and three? And uh, this 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 is. This target is uh, so in the mo in the morning session. So Professor Novis Sensei so provided proposed. So do we have any comments and questions and uh, some ideas? We invite so your your co uh, comments. Do you have some some comment on this? This is uh, this is a biological function of nature by 2050. Also, can you see the one more one more slide? One more slide is focusing on so food loss and waste issues. Uh, do, do you have any, any comments on, the, on these two topics? Of oh, oh, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, I, I'm Otani from uh, NARO, a Vice President of Responsible for the Food Chain and the Food Loss and Waste. Uh, Morbabi-san, uh, you, to you told me uh, there's a no uh, no standard of the food loss and waste. That is very important for me, for us, because uh, the the first priority of the D Max uh, D uh, twenty Max uh, is food loss and waste. But we have no standard of <laughs> food and loss. Terminology, the first priority to decide. So I think uh, the uh, international organizations such as OECD or FAO uh, should. Uh, make uh, some definition of the uh, terminology. So when I explain that this uh, concept, uh, what is food loss and what, what is uh, waste, I, I don't know exactly. So do you have some idea to make a standard? Um, clearly, you're right, and it's embarrassing that 10 years after the first discussions, we still don't have a standard. Uh, the EU has done a lot of work trying to uh, define. Uh, the US has done, they, they're very much aligned, I think. So uh, hopefully, uh, w what I know uh, is that uh, the next meeting of the G20 agriculture will also talk about food loss and waste, and maybe that's the time for governments to say, okay, now we, I mean, to set, to set the time and say by 2022, we want a definition and we want a calculation method. Max, do your work. Uh, maybe that would be one, one solution. At the OECD, we're not in a position to develop a, a definition of, of food loss and waste. I know that the FAO has uh, done, uh, the UN system has, uh, is very much interested in the issue for obvious reasons. Uh, so the FAO has been tasked to develop a food, lo a food loss index which, for which they have published the first result. What they advocate is that you, uh, for I think it applies more to developing countries, is that you uh, countries would focus on several commodities, mostly grains, uh, and try to improve the methodology at least for these commodities, and then from there move on. Uh, UNEP has been tasked to do the waste uh, food food, uh, food waste index, and they still haven't published. Uh, the the problem is. I think 
that uh, the methodology is not robust, and but still it's a beginning. So I don't think we should say it's not robust. Not robust. We not we don't adhere. I think we should say it's not robust. Let's let's work on it and make it more robust. Uh, but you're right. It's it's a, especially when the objective is to reduce, and you say you give a number by 20 percent, by 10 percent, by 5 percent. But we know nothing of the start point, so it's it's a, a bit of a. It's more of an intention than a reality, I think, for the moment. But uh, we count on member states of the G20 to push the uh, agenda forward. Thank you so much. So I'm sorry we, have, we spent a lot of time. So I have to close these uh, sessions. So if you have some uh, other questions, or we, we, uh, you, you take, raise a hand at the uh, last session. Thank you so much, so especially Professor Minami Sarawak and Mr. Thanks so much.